Puffin, virtually live with Rick Ryden, the author behind the epic Percy Jackson stories. My name is Radzi and I'll be running things today. And joining me in the studio, we've only gone and got the loudest audience of all time. Make some noise! <laughs> no, that's what I'm talking about. Can everyone in Camp Half-Blood with orange flags make some noise? <laughs> And Camp Jupiter with purple flags made some noise. <laughs> that was loud. And a huge hello also to viewers in Mexico, America, and of course here in the United Kingdom. And hopefully by the end of today's show, you'll not only be able to write your own modern day myths like Percy Jackson, but you'll also be ready to take on whatever those crazy Greek gods might throw at you. <laughs> Okay, hey, okay, well, good, I'm, I'm glad. Hey, everybody, this is Rick Riordan. Yeah, sorry about the power failure. I think Zeus is uh, messing uh, with the uh, lightning bolts here on Mount Olympus again. Anyway, glad to be with you for uh, Puffin Virtually Live, and thanks for tuning in to the Modern Myth Master Writing Class. I'm really looking forward to this. We're going to answer your questions in a little while, and I'll be drawing a monster along with you, although... My writing uh, skills are a lot better than my drawing skills, so we'll see how that goes. That man is a legend, and Rick's going to be answering your questions later on in the show. Please tweet your hellos to at Puffin Books using the hashtag, hashtag Rick Ryden Show, to get a surprise school shout out right here on the screen. So, like Rick said, today you're going to find out how to write your own modern day myth. And to do this, you'll need to create a hero, invent a quest to send them on, describe the setting, and the best bit, choose a couple of monsters. So let's get started with creating a hero. So to everyone here and in your classrooms, put your hands up if you know who Percy Jackson is. I'm not surprised at all because he is pretty famous. But he once thought he was just an ordinary boy. Well, that was until he vaporized his math teacher. Percy Jackson's world is just like ours. There are skateboards and computers. The only difference is that the Greek gods still exist, and sometimes they come down to Earth to make a little bit of trouble. One day, Percy finds out that his dad is actually a god. Does anybody, by the way, know who that god is? Poseidon! Absolutely spot on. Poseidon, you are correct to say that. But who is Poseidon? That's one for Rick. Yeah, who is the god Poseidon? Good question. Well, he's the god of the sea, uh, and because of that, Percy shares some of his water-based powers. For instance, Percy's a great swimmer. He can hold his breath pretty much forever. He can also use the water to heal himself and to fight enemies. He's especially good at making toilets explode. Imagine that if in your school bathroom the toilet exploded. That would be a big mess right there. Now, our audience is going to help me read out some of your questions. Who's got Laura's question from Atlanta International School? Um, where did you get the idea of Percy Jackson? Great. The idea for Percy Jackson from my son when he was about eight years old. He was really struggling in school. Uh, we found out he was dyslexic and he was ADHD. Uh, about the only thing that he liked in school that year was Greek mythology. So I started telling him some stories to keep him interested. And when I ran out of the original myths, I made one up, Percy Jackson. And that's how the story was born. Simple as that, he made it up. And the next question is from Theo at Wadebridge Primary School. Who is that one? Which is your favorite Percy Jackson book? Good question. I love all of the books. I, I'm not sure that I had a favorite per se. It's usually the one I just finished because it's freshest in my mind. I do have to say, writing The Hidden Oracle for The Trials of Apollo was pretty amazing. I had never written from the point of view of an immortal god. I kind of liked that. We like that as well. And actually, we'll be hearing more from the trials of Apollo later on. But first, Nancy from Bangalore International School in India asks, how do you go about creating characters, Rick? Yeah, I think when you're creating a hero, well, I mean, the Greek gods really are the first superheroes. I mean, they're just as cool as Batman and just as weird as the X-Men. They all have these wonderful powers. So I think that's where you start the wonderful powers that a hero or a god might have. Sometimes it can help to think about the things that, that you're good at. 
uh, and use that as a base. What are you really, really good at? Now magnify that into a superpower and you can decide whether you're going to use that power for good or evil. Look at his evil face there. So it's all about finding out something you're good at or a hobby and then just exaggerating it a bit. But in case you still need some more inspiration, I've got two very special guests waiting backstage who are so fast, in fact, you might mistake them for superhumans themselves. Would you please put your hands together and make an awful lot of noise for sprinters OJ Doberan and Imani Lenisko from Team GB! <laughs> Come on in, guys! Welcome to Puffin Virtually Live. Hello. Now, hey! <laughs> and for the uninitiated, would you please tell us a bit about yourselves? I'm Imani, I'm 18. I've been training for five years on the GB team for three of those years. Round of applause, please. <laughs> and OJ. Well, my name is OJ. I run the 100 and 200 meters and I'm part of Team GB. Round of applause, please. <laughs> it's awesome to have you here. Thank you. Now, let's start at the beginning. How did you even get into sprinting? Well, both of my parents are sprinters, so they kind of coaxed me into doing athletics, and I literally just fell in love with it. So it was meant to be, in other words? Yeah. <laughs> and what about yourself, OJ? Well, I actually ran at one of my sports days when I was in secondary school, and I got invited to come and train down at my local track, and it just went from there, really. And do you have, like, an achievement that you're most proud of? I'd have to say it's winning the European Junior Championships last year. You actually won that? <laughs> yes, I actually won. And you got a gold medal to show for it? Oh, I haven't brought it with me today, but... I'm sure I can find some pictures. I think that deserves a round of applause anyway. Yeah. European junior champ. Yeah. And what about yourself, Amani? I think my first GB call-up was really important to me. It was just such an honour to represent the country, and I couldn't believe it at the time. So, yeah, that was my biggest... It, it really is a phenomenal <laughs> achievement. And the training you guys do, the reason you're the absolute best mm. is your training. What do you do on a normal day-to-day? We train five times a week yeah. um, and we go to some really cool training camps all across the world. We just came back from Tenerife, we've been to Doha, we've been to Arizona, so yeah, it's really cool. It's really good work if you can get it. Actually, those training camps sound a little bit like Percy Jackson does at Camp Half-Blood, basically a training camp for demigods. Now, can you please put your hands up if you've heard of the Greek god Hermes? Well done. You, you are a very, very knowledgeable audience here. Well, he is the messenger god who can run super fast, faster than the speed of light, so fast he even becomes invisible. Well, he has a certain accessory. It's at this point we've got to now look at Amani's shoes. Look at these here. You have your very own Hermes winged feet. Lucky me. Lucky you. Everyone's <laughs> going, whoa. Would you like those on the track? I would love them. I'm going to take them home, actually, probably. It's done. It's arranged. <laughs> it's as simple as that. Well, with that in mind, when you are making your heroes, it's good to give them a few accessories just to help them out. So Rick said, think about something you're good at, but what if you can't think of anything? Well, viewers at Trinity St. Mary and Greystone Primary School, and you guys here in the audience, listen very carefully and make sure you put your pens and your pencils ready. Everybody is good at something, but in case you need some inspiration, let's pretend that your dad is a Greek god. I just happen to have a convenient scroll here delivered by Hermes Express this morning. Uh, let's see, we're going to have some questions for you and you can answer A, B, and C uh, and we'll see who your Greek father might be as we play Who's Your Greek God Daddy? Okay, question number one. Which word describes you best? A, leader, B, energetic, C, relaxed. Now, question two. What theme would you pick for your party? A, a royal party, B, it doesn't matter so long as the music's good, or C, a pool party. Question three. Which is your favorite bird or animal? A, an eagle, B, a mouse, or C, dolphins. And finally, question four, how would you most like to travel? A, on a cloud, B, via a chariot pulled by four horses, or C, underwater in a submarine? Okay, now add up how many A's, B's, and C's you've got to find out 
Who's your Greek god daddy? He's got a cool voice, doesn't he? So hopefully at this point you've all written down your answers, including you in schools and at home. Imani, what have you gone? Mostly letters. A. Mostly A's. OJ? I've got B. Nice. We've got two different answers. OK, so put your hands up if you've got mostly A's as your answer. OK, well, if you do, that means you're most like Zeus, the king of all the Greek gods. He's the god of the sky, and you're probably the leader of the pack, strong and brave, and most importantly, someone your friends can trust. Imani, is that true of yourself? I hope so. <laughs> I hope so as well. I like that one. Now, who got mostly bees? OK, not quite as many. Well, if you've got lots of bees, you share many of Apollo's traits, the Greek god. So Apollo is the god of light and sun. Your talent shines through and your personality lights up the room. But you also love music. OJ, is that accurate? Yeah, that's very accurate, actually. What's your music of choice? Uh, I like a lot of um, hip-hop music. Hip-hop and rap? Yeah. That's me right there. <laughs> and finally, C's. Who got mostly C's? OK, well, that means you've got a lot in common with Percy Jackson and his father, Poseidon, the god of the sea. So do you guys love swimming? Yes! Well, that means you might be just as comfortable underwater as you are on land, although you can be quite impulsive. That's a bit like me. So how did you guys watching at home do? Ask your friends if you think those gods sound a little bit like you. And remember to keep tweeting at the hashtag Rick Ryden Show to see those surprise school shout outs. Like Rick was saying, you can use the traits of Greek gods to help shape your characters. So if your hero had a Greek god daddy, then imagine how their day to day lives would be affected. Our studio audience have already been thinking about a few ideas for their heroes and what powers they might have. My superhero's name is Flaming Squirrel. Her superpower is to, is to be able to talk to animals. Perfect. And do you want to pass the microphone along to the next person? My mythical hero is called Calcamine. He's son of Hades, but he betrayed his father and turned good. Fantastic answer. Who's got the next answer? My mythical hero is called Cyberwolf, and he has the brains of a computer. Those ideas are fab. OK, so I hope you've all got some ideas for your heroes now, because next up, we're going to send them on a quest. A quest is like a mission or an adventure. In Percy Jackson's world, heroes and demigods go on quests to find lightning bolts to save the world and to prove themselves. Rick Ryden uses lots of quests in his books inspired by Greek myths, which is why we challenged him to see how many he could remember in just 45 seconds. Right. I don't know what that is. Okay. Oh, okay. A lightning bolt. You're carrying a lightning bolt in a low security bag here. Come on, guys. This is Zeus's lightning bolt that got stolen and Percy Jackson had to find it. That's easy. Okay, what is it? Oh, okay. Snakes. You got a lightning bolt and snakes in the bag. Fine. These are probably from Medusa's last haircut. She could turn people into stone just by looking at them. Uh, what else have we got? Yeah. Uh, oh, sure, uh, gold coins, okay. This is probably from the King Midas myth, where he could turn everything he touched into gold. Easy peasy. Okay, what else have we got here? Mm. Mm. Okay, well, I'm going to guess this is Pandora's box, even though it's not really supposed to be a box, but she opened it and she let all these terrible things come out, like anger, hunger, homework, you know, that sort of thing. 100% for effort. Can we give Rick a round of applause? There are all types of quests, because a quest is basically a challenge that you have to complete. Whether your hero is outwitting, I don't know, Medusa with her scary snake hair, or acing an exam, or even running in a school sports day, quests aren't meant to be easy, but they will make your story exciting and adventurous. OJ, bring it back to yourself, sir. What will be your personal quest? Well, my personal quest for this summer is to make the Olympic team in August. Do you think you can do it? Got the backing here. And what about yours in mind? In terms of challenges that you face, because as an athlete, you can get injured, you train really hard. What's your biggest challenge? I think my biggest challenge so far is transitioning from a junior athlete to a senior athlete and establishing myself in the Olympic team, really. And do we think Imani can do that? Yes! That is what I'm talking about. Actually, did you know that the Olympics started in ancient Greece? Did you know that, guys? Yes! You're a clever lot, you guys. Well, this summer, they're going to be in Rio, Brazil. Who here has a sports day coming up? 
you all do. Good. Because the guys here are experts in running fast, which you'll have to probably do in sports day, what tips would you have for these? What one top tip would you say? Well, my top tip would be to try and relax and make sure you're having fun whilst you're running, really. Having fun, I love that. Mine would be just love every second of it and be confident and positive and it should go well. OK, what happens if it doesn't go well and you're a bit behind and you're trying to win? What would you say then? I'd say just try and relax and trust that you're going to catch up with everybody else. OK, so we've sorted our hero and we've definitely covered Quest, but now onto something really important, setting the scene and creating the world. Rick, can you tell us more, please? Yeah, I think the setting is really important. And in Percy Jackson's case, you know, it made sense to me, especially since my son was the audience at first, that it would have to be a setting he could relate to. It's kind of hard to relate to how people lived three or 4,000 years ago. That's why I set Percy in the modern world. It's something we can all relate to. We can all relate to that. That sounds great. Well, Rick's now going to read to us from his new book, The Trials of Apollo. So listen carefully, guys, because I'm going to ask you some questions. I want to ask you three questions, in fact. Which city the story set in? Where you think Apollo has landed? And what season it is? In the case of Trials of Apollo, uh, the setting starts back in very familiar territory. We're back in New York City, Percy Jackson's stomping grounds, and Apollo lands there, literally, and has to find his way to the only place he can think of where he can get help, Camp Half-Blood. I simply woke up falling. Skyscrapers spiraled in and out of view. Flames streamed off my body. I tried to fly. I tried to change into a cloud or teleport across the world or do a hundred other things that should have been easy for me. But I just kept falling. I plunged into a narrow canyon between two buildings and bam! Is anything sadder than the sound of a god hitting a pile of garbage bags. I lay groaning and aching in an open dumpster. My nostrils burned with the stench of rancid salami and used diapers. My ribs felt broken, though that shouldn't have been possible. My mind stewed in confusion, but one memory floated to the surface, the voice of my father, Zeus. Your fault your punishment. I realized what had happened to me, and I sobbed in despair. Even for a god of poetry such as myself, it is difficult to describe how I felt. How could you, a mere mortal, possibly understand? Imagine being stripped of your clothes, then blasted with a fire hose in front of a laughing crowd. Imagine the ice-cold water filling your mouth and lungs, the pressure bruising your skin, turning your joints to putty. Imagine feeling helpless, ashamed, completely vulnerable, publicly and humiliatedly stripped of everything that makes you, you. My humiliation was worse than that. Your fault, Zeus's voice rang in my head. No, I cried miserably. No, it, it wasn't. Please. Nobody answered. On either side of me, rusty fire escapes zigzagged up brick walls. Above, the winter sky was gray and unforgiving. I tried to remember the details of my sentencing. Had my father told me how long this punishment would last? What was I supposed to do to regain his favor? My memory was too fuzzy. I could barely recall what Zeus looked like, much less why he'd decided to toss me to Earth. There'd been a war with the giants, I thought. The gods had been caught off guard, embarrassed, almost defeated. The only thing I knew for certain, my punishment was unfair. Zeus needed someone to blame, so of course, he picked the handsomest, most talented, most popular god in the pantheon, me. I lay in the garbage, staring at the label inside the dumpster lid. 
For pickup, call 1-555-STINGY. Well, hopefully you got all that. So let's kick things off with a question because Apollo is a god who's been thrown down from the heavens by a very angry Zeus. But who can tell me in which city he's landed in? I think Apollo landed in New York. New York, you're going. New York City, you are correct. Well done. And did anyone hear what smelly place he landed in? It is rather smelly. Yes. He landed in a bin. In a bin is absolutely correct. Two out of two so far. Can we make it three out of three? Which season is it? Yes. It was winter when he landed in the bin. Three out of three from the audience. Give yourselves a round of applause. That was some super listening. How did you do in your classrooms? Now, of course, throwing his heroes through the sky and destroying buildings simply isn't enough for Rick Ryden. Oh, no. Views in Ashgrove Junior School have lots of questions about mythical creatures. Rick, can you tell us more about the monsters in your books, please? Ah, oh, yes, monsters. Now we're getting to the really good stuff. A hero is only as good as the monsters that he or she fights. Monsters are really important because if you don't have a challenge, well, you know, how do you prove that you're brave and strong and smart and all of that? The monsters that I use are all really from the myths. I don't make up any of this stuff. I pull them from those old two, three thousand year old stories and I just make them modern and I throw them at my heroes to see what'll happen. It's always fun to see who's going to win. It's really fun to see that. And actually, Rick, while we've brought you on the line, can you tell the viewers at Dawlish Community College and Park Hill Primary School which is your favourite monster? Monsters, you know, I like them all, but I think probably my favourite is the Minotaur. Before I met the Minotaur, I was not afraid of cows, uh, and now, yeah, kind of am. Well, that's not surprising. The Minotaur is half bull, half ban. What a crazy combination. But not all these mixed up mythical animals are baddies. Because if you're a massive fan, you'll possibly know Tyson was a cyclops. Oh dear. It's a man, a dude, a bloke with one eye. It's not a big deal. We've got him prepped in the audience. He's actually one of Percy's brothers and is also one of the goodies. Well, another mixed up creature who helps Percy quite a lot is Pegasus, a winged horse. Do we know who Pegasus is? Of course you guys do. Now for this you're going to need your pens and papers once again because we're going to learn how to draw this very animal. Hi, I'm Matt. I'm a designer from Puffin and today I'm going to teach you how to draw a Pegasus. It's a mythological Greek creature that's half horse, half bird. You're going to need some pens and your paper, so let's get to it. Have you got your pens and papers ready? First, we'll draw a square and then connect a circle to it. And then, triangle, and a bigger circle. We'll then draw four little circles, and two little squares. This will make up the legs and the hooves. We'll then draw the back legs and the feet with tiny circles and tiny squares. We're now going to connect it all together so they're not just floating shapes. Follow my lead and you'll see the legs eventually taking shape. Now let's connect the body together. This is my favourite part. Take your pen and draw the big sweeping wings. A pegasus isn't a pegasus without wings. And don't forget to draw the tail. We'll then move back to the head and add detail. Make sure the head's connected by drawing a line around the front of the body. We then want to outline the legs and give the pegasus some feet.
Let's go back to the head and make sure we give our pixies some eyes and a mane. And let's give her or him some feathers. We'll also draw some lines on the tail to make it more dynamic. And there we go, we've drawn a Pegasus. Go to the Puffin YouTube channel to find out how to draw a Minotaur. Ask your teachers to send us your pictures by tweeting us at PuffinBooks. That's my attempt. Not the best, but I think I need to go onto the YouTube channel for this one. But let's see your attempts, more importantly. Hold them high and hold them proud. Look at those. They are very, very good. Now you can put them down. Thank you very much for that. And actually, like Matt says, you can tweet them into at Puffin Books using the hashtag, hashtag Rick Ride and Show, and find out how to draw a Minotaur, as well as, like I said, on the Puffin YouTube channel. So in a moment, we're going to answer a few more of your questions. But first, here are some silly ones which Rick was sent from the viewers of Blue Peter. I happen to like that show, and I'm not biased at all. Amethyst Cheesy Unicorn asks, what's your favourite type of cheese? Unicorn, is there a bad kind of cheese? I love cheese. I guess probably Swiss, because it is, after all, the holy cheese. Pearl Posh Avocado asks, what is your favorite emoji? Well, I'm kind of old-fashioned when it comes to emojis. Can you be old-fashioned when it comes to emojis? Sure, why not? I like the smiley face. Carmine Chatty Turtle asks, what is your favorite ice cream topping? You know, as long as there's ice cream under the topping, I really don't care. But I do like sprinkles. Peridot Bubbly Phoenix wants to know, would you rather have to sneeze but not be able to, or have something stuck in your eye for an entire year? Oh, that's an easy one. I'm very squeamish about my eyes. Stay away from the eyes. I'd much rather have to sneeze. From White Rocking Porpoise. If you could have any topping on a pizza, what would it be? You're implying that there are toppings other than pepperoni? I will have to look into this. Then Wintry Current asks, have you ever done skydiving? Oh, dear Zeus, no. Mm -hmm. Like Percy, I try to stay out of the sky as much as possible. I'm a little terrified of heights. Blue Peter viewers always write the best questions. Okay, so now I've got time for just two more questions from our online audience. Sophie from Quadrant School asks, what was your favorite book as a child? I had a lot of favorites. Uh, I think James and the Giant Peach would probably be right up there. Uh, I loved when that big peach rolls over the evil ants. I just thought that was a wonderful scene. It's a classic. And today's very last question is from Abby at St. Mary's, GNS in Ireland, who asked, who inspired you to be a writer? I had a very good English teacher when I was about 12 years old. And she was the first one to say, Rick, you could be a writer if you wanted to. She's also the person that got me really, really interested in reading. So I have to thank Mrs. Pabst, my old English teacher. And of course, also my parents. They took the time to read to me, and they definitely inspired me a lot. Well, there you go. We started off by vaporizing our teachers, and now it turns out they can be pretty inspirational. Well, we've reached just about the end of the show, but we've got a few thank yous to make. Now, it wouldn't be Puffin Virtually Live if we didn't bring our athletes back on, because do we know who Jessica Ennis and Mo Farah are? Yes. Well, we could be looking at two future Jess Ennises and Mo Farahs right here in the name of OJ and Amani. Can we please give them a massive round of applause? <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. Thank you so much to everyone for watching, and also thank you to your audience. Give yourselves a round of applause. Good luck in writing your own modern day myths and also we cannot end the show without saying an enormous, massive, make a huge lot of noise for the myth master himself, Rick Ryden. <laughs> well, you can watch this show again on demand and you can even sign up for the autumn programme of events, which includes the Roald Dahl Day extravaganza on September 13th, a show with BBC Sports presenter Claire Balding and a Christmas special with McFly's Tom Fletcher. Thank you very much for watching. Bye-bye!
a great time today. Thank you guys for tuning in. Best of luck with writing your modern myths. Take care. My superhero would be called Eagle and he has wings and claws. My superhero would be called Zap and he has super speed. My superhero would be called Blaze Girl. She has the power to turn to fire. My hero's name is Oisin. He's half deer, half human and he's got big antlers that help him fight and long legs that help him jump. My hero is called Humopus. He's half human and half octopus. When he's in the sea, he protects the sea creatures and when he's on earth, he protects humans. <laughs>